Okay. Um, fabulous. Well, um, thank you very much to to everyone who's uh, come along uh, today. Uh, my name is uh, Maddie Chalmers. Uh, I'm a lecturer in French studies uh, here at the University of Leicester, and I'm also one of the Modern Languages admissions tutors. Um, so it's a great pleasure to kind of welcome you. And the aim of this session is really to tell you a little bit about who we are in Modern Languages uh, and to explain what we can offer you and to hopefully answer any questions that you may have. So first off, who are we? OK, um, I often like to say that modern languages isn't a what, it's a who. And the first thing that we are is dedicated teachers. And that's something that's recognised by national league tables, by the university and by our students. So we score consistently high results in the National Student Survey that's completed by all final year students just before they graduate and National League tables. So you can see our results in the 2023 National Student Survey where we scored in the top quintile for all question areas and in the Complete University Guide for 2024, all three of the languages that we offer, Italian, Spanish and French, score in the top 20. In 2019, uh, in 2020, we were the teaching team of the year in the university. And this year we have uh, nominations for the university's 2023 Citizens Awards. So we have two nominations for student experience champions for staff within modern languages. We also have one of the highest numbers of university distinguished teaching fellows in the university. So that's colleagues who have been recognized for their exceptional teaching practice um, and uh, the results that that's achieved for their students. So we're pretty passionate about teaching. But we're also active researchers. So with our colleagues in uh, film and English, we make up the School of Arts. OK, so the School of Arts allows us to work on research collaborations and partnerships, and we're shortly going to be joined and become a bigger school, uh, including media and communications. And we are an outstanding school. So in the 2021 UK Research Excellence Framework, we placed 11th in the UK. Um, and that's uh, analysing all of the research. 97% of our research was judged to be world leading. So you really are coming to a place where staff know their stuff. Um, and this comment from a student who graduated in 2023 sort of says it all. I enjoy having the opportunity to be taught by real subject specialists, often using their published works in my assessment. So you're going to be taught by world experts. But of course, the biggest reason that we're a who and not a what is the community that we form with our students. And we are a supportive community. And here, I'm just going to give you two quotations, again, um, from students who graduated in 2023, because they say it better than I can. The Modern Languages Department clearly prides themselves on the sense of community that they have developed, and this is felt throughout all their classes. The cohort is very close knit. There's a sense of community and the professors really care about what is happening with us. There is no sense of toxic competition. And I think that really sums us up. We're a department that has big ambitions for our research, big ambitions for our students, but we operate on a human scale. We get to know you as individuals, we care about you as individuals, and we support you as individuals. But what does it actually mean to study modern languages? What are you going to be doing day to day? Well, we offer a diverse curriculum that provides pathways to both language proficiency and intercultural fluency. And if we break that down, what that means is not only are you going to become a fluent speaker in your chosen language or languages, so being able to read, write, speak, listen, but you're also going to be able to see the world through another culture or other cultures eyes. You're going to have that perspective on the world um, that looks beyond uh, the borders of your own nationality and identity to take on how other people perceive politics and society uh, and the world. How do we achieve this? Well, we offer a focus on linguistic accuracy and communication skills. So from beginner, from scratch uh, and from advanced levels, so that's post A level. We also offer our wide ranging cultural studies modules that are giving you that intercultural um, flexibility. And all of this is research inspired teaching, which means you're being taught by experts in their field. OK, across all areas of the curriculum, whether that's language 
or culture. We do this with the supportive learning community that I've mentioned, not just the staff, but your fellow students, high levels of contact time, small group teaching so that you really get that personalised individual focus and support. And we also have some unique learning opportunities, which I'll talk about a little further on in the talk. But a special note is our optional two week part funded summer school at the end of your first year, which gives you total immersion and intensive language training, uh, as well as being a kind of fantastic bonding experience. We also, of course, offer a year abroad in all our modern languages courses. Um, and as you'll see later on in my talk, uh, that's a year that can take you to some incredible destinations. And all of this together delivers an experience that we think is, and not just us, but our students too, think is exceptional, not only in the teaching, but in the topic studied and the help provided. So, we have lots and lots of courses and it can be a little bit of a sort of mind boggling experience navigating all of these options. Now, of course, we have our modern languages BA, but we also have lots of combinations with other subjects and all of these courses include a year abroad. I'm going to walk you through them. It's a lot of information um, and the best thing that you can do is to check the course pages on the university website. Um, because that will give you details of all the courses and almost a year by year breakdown of the modules you can take and how to combine them. So if you really want to be able to plot your trajectory, I recommend you look at the university website. So I'm just going to give you an overview here, OK, um, just to give you a flavour. OK. So we'll start with our modern languages BA, OK. So in this degree, you can take two or three languages, French, Italian and or Spanish. So you can study all three languages all the way up to degree level and all languages in your combination can be taken post A level. One language in your combination can be taken ab initio from scratch. So, for example, if you have uh, French A level, but you've never done Italian, you can do French and Italian. From 2024 entry, so that's what most of you will be looking at, we're planning to offer Chinese to intermediate level as an ab initio third language option. Um, and this is something that is going through committees at the moment, but which we are hoping to confirm by our offer holder days in the new year. So there's that option that's going to be there too. We also offer a modern languages and translation BA. So translation is a particular strength in Leicester. We're home to the Centre for Translation and Interpreting Studies. And this is a very flexible course. You can either combine it uh, in a 75% to 25% ratio, so weighted towards modern languages, or you can do a split, sort of 50 50 split where you'll study one modern language and then translation. Okay, so it's up to you deciding how you want to focus your studies. And again, this is an example of where having a look at the website and the course trajectory and the different modules on offer will help you kind of decide your weighting. It's important to say that both ratios use the same UCAS code, so you don't need to make a decision at this application stage uh, about how exactly you're going to split the degree. We also have uh, an exciting opportunity for Chinese and Arabic speakers. So native Chinese or Arabic speakers or people with an A-level in Chinese or Arabic who maybe don't have an A-level in a, the European language they want to study can take beginners level modules in French, Italian or Spanish for the modern languages side of the degree. And then for the translation side of the degree, they can use the Chinese and Arabic that they already have. So if that applies to you, this is an option, a pathway that might open up a degree course that perhaps you thought wasn't open to you. So don't hesitate to get in touch with us if, if this is your sort of situation. We also offer um, modern languages with other subjects too. So with English in a 50-50 combination, OK, where again, the language you choose can be continued post A level or taken from scratch. OK, so French and English, Italian and English, Spanish and English. We offer modern languages and international relations where you study one or two of our three core languages, French, Spanish and Italian and international relations, which is a sort of focus on contemporary European politics. Again, one of your languages can be taken from scratch and again, you can decide on your split, whether you want to wait 75, 25, weighted towards modern languages, or whether you want a 50-50 split between language and politics. 
It's important to note that Italian can't be studied as a single language if you're splitting 75 to 25. OK, so just a note for you there. Again, if this all feels like lots of numbers and lots of ratios and combinations, the university website lays it out really clearly on the course pages. So they are your kind of excellent reference point for that. Modern languages with management. Again, um, this is a 75 to 25 split between languages and management. Uh, so Italian can't be taken as a single language, but it can be taken in combination with French or Spanish. Um, and as with all our courses, one language can be taken from scratch. OK. Again, this is a fantastic opportunity to build your language skills while also gaining that experience in management. It's quite um, a power combo, uh, modern languages and management, which is studied through uh, our business school. And then uh, last but not least, we have modern languages with film studies, uh, where again, you can see it's another 75, 25 ratio weighted towards languages. One language can be taken uh, ab initio again. OK. All right, so again, lots of combinations, lots of options. Do take the time to kind of plot your trajectory. And of course, I'm very happy to answer any questions on the intricacies of our courses. OK, so making your choice. Um, this is my advice to you um, is, is really looking at the module options uh, and almost kind of plotting out your little route through the degree. It's a really good way to sort of make a very empowered and informed choice. So let's get into a little bit more detail about what these courses actually involve. So for the language side of your course, we've got specialised language tutors, small group teaching, lots of contact with native speakers, including Erasmus students from French speaking countries who are over here um, for their studies. We like to bring them in for extra conversation practice. We provide a range of assessments okay, to suit different learning styles and to reflect sort of real world usage and practice. Uh, and we also offer a full program of extracurricular activities, socials, film screenings um, and practical and theoretical options. So in later years, in your final year, for example, you can take options in interpreting, in teaching English as a foreign language, if you're interested in that really hands on side of language learning. Uh, but we also have some more theoretical options um, in linguistics, for example, if that's the side that interests you. So what you can expect, OK, if you are taking for the language you are taking from scratch, um, we have two intensive two hour sessions per week in very small groups, so maximum 10 students. And that's taking a very holistic approach. And we aim to get you to the same standard as your sort of post A level peers uh, within those two years, those first two years before your year abroad. If you're uh, doing a language post A level, then we have focus time on reading and writing and listening and speaking. Our group's going to be slightly bigger for writing classes, but an absolute max of 15 to 20. And then for speaking classes, a max of 10 students. Again, that's actually giving you a chance to really speak and be heard. Um, you're never going to sort of get lost in the crowd or sort of be anonymous. Uh, your tutor is really going to hear and get to know you and be able to advise you on how to improve. In cultural studies, OK, this is the, the part of the degree that can sometimes seem a little bit um, confusing, right? We all know how to learn a language uh, and what that might involve, but cultural studies can seem a little bit broad. We offer specialist modules and research inspired teaching in everything from literature to film, visual arts, politics, gender, race and ethnicity studies, historical contexts and contemporary issues. A modern languages degree is really like doing five degrees in one. Not only are you learning the language, but you're learning how that language has shaped and been shaped by artistic and cultural production. So you're getting to know not just Spanish as a language, but Spanish as it's understood uh, and as it's shaped the way that Spanish speakers look at the world. And of course, we're not just thinking about European France and Spain. We're also thinking about uh, the legacies of colonialism uh, and processing those histories and looking at Latin America and the Francophone world too. So, for example, uh, a module that I'm teaching from next year to my second years, it's called Politics, Technology and Ecology in Francophone Culture. And we're going to be studying texts 
and films uh, and theories about artificial intelligence, automation and the climate crisis. So studying sort of fictional and theoretical representations of technology and ecology in order to think about our future. How do these narratives shape the way that we encounter and even make policies uh, about technology today? So just to give you a flavor of how um, cultural studies isn't something that's like abstract from the real world, but it's something that really shapes our understanding of the world we inhabit and the kind of world that we want to create and that you want to create as you head out uh, after graduation. And in terms of what you can expect, the setup again, small group teaching, a max of 15 to 20 students in a seminar group. So again, really sort of individual personalized attention and you get to know each other to get comfortable discussing with each other. Contact hours 11 to 12 per week. That's all your culture studies modules together. OK, our teaching format is heavily weighted towards seminars because we teach in those smaller groups. Um, the kind of lecture where we have, you know, the sage on the stage isn't really our style. We want to hear you talk. Um, and so we use that sort of seminar style that is very informal um, to kind of discuss prepared readings, to share questions, to share thoughts uh, in a way that is much more democratic. OK, um, and which really kind of empowers students uh, to kind of trust their own opinions and judgments. Um, and similar to that, we also have a kind of assessment approach that is very much based on. Diversity. Um, so we have presentations and essays, those kind of more traditional forms of assessment, but we also offer scenario based assessments for my first years uh, in French. One of their tasks is to present a pitch for a, a an adaptation of one of their set texts uh, to Netflix. So it's a way of kind of incorporating some of those real world employability skills while still getting you to think in a very detailed and precise way about the literature that you're studying. So we have coursework all the way through the year. We are not keen on big end of year exams because we don't believe that they showcase um, the best of what people can do. And we're really keen for people to be able to have feedback throughout the year and to improve and learn as they go on. So that's very much our, our assessment strategy. Uh, and it's something that we're really keen on, on and really attentive uh, to student feedback on. OK, so now for our unique opportunities, the things that we offer that no one else does. And the biggest of these is the summer school. So this is a two week stay in a target language country. It's optional. We understand that some people are in a position where they are needing to work during the summer holidays uh, or there may be other circumstances and we provide support um, in those situations uh, and it's partly funded. Okay, so we arrange and cover the costs of accommodation with local families in the target language country and we cover the cost of the language course, which is intensive and tailored. Um, and there are also cultural activities and excursions available. So what does it offer? Well, obviously your language skills are going to improve. Obviously you're going to get a taste of that target language culture and it's going to offer you that kind of confidence boost and that sense that you are a little bit more prepared for the year abroad. And we are the only university to offer an opportunity like this. It's something that our students love and really benefit from. So our destinations in France uh, are very sunny Montpellier down in the south. Uh, in Italy, we have historically uh, been taking our students to Tuscany, but we are now looking at a new provider uh, in Mondavio. And in Spain, uh, we take our students to Santiago de Compostela, uh, so another sort of historic city. Uh, and as you can imagine, in the summer, at the end of your first year, uh, these are nice places to be uh, with your friends. And of course, this is all building up to the major uh, sort of third year of your degree, which is the year abroad. And this is a part of the degree that can either inspire amazing excitement in some people and maybe a little bit of dread in others. OK, so it's a core element of all our degrees. We are also very um, attentive to student circumstances. If there are reasons why a student can't go on the year abroad, then we can discuss that on an individual case by case basis to make sure that student is supported. 
but it's a core element of the degree. And there are three options uh, to study abroad in one of our partner universities, to work abroad, uh, so on placement or an internship, or you can do a British Council teaching assistantship. And that's a year long process where you're teaching English in um, your target language country. I'm going to talk you a little bit through each of those options just to give you a flavour of what would be involved. OK, so we have a large number of partner universities where we have long standing arrangements where our students uh, go to them for their years abroad and some of their students come over uh, and study with us. So if you're studying French, you've got a large number, whoops, a large number of options available to you all across France, everywhere from Avignon to Bordeaux to Lyon to Paris to Pau. OK, so that's crossing the whole geographical span of France from north to south. And you've got big cities, smaller cities and then more regional universities as well. So you can find somewhere that fits the kind of um, vibe that you're looking for. Um, OK, we invite students to give us um, their choices ranked in order of preference, and we do our very best to make sure people are assigned to their top choice or top two choices. But of course, uh, France isn't the only country where French is spoken. We also have opportunities in three Francophone universities in Belgium. We have a partner in Geneva in Switzerland where you can study. And uh, very excitingly, if you love the snow in French speaking Canada in Quebec, we also have three partners there. Um, Sherbrooke uh, in Quebec City at the Université Laval and uh, in Trois-Rivières as well. So you've got a wide array, a vast choice. Um, and the fantastic thing about studying abroad is you get to try courses that maybe you haven't had uh, a chance to study within your degree programme in the UK. So you could take some film studies modules, even if you don't study film here. It's a chance to kind of explore uh, and try things out. Um, if you're taking Italian, we've got, again, a fantastic uh, set of partnerships with Italian universities. Again, as you can see, there's everything from big famous cities to sort of smaller um, locations. Um, and in Spain, again, we've got it covered from Barcelona in the north uh, all the way down uh, to uh, Santiago de Compostela. Um, so some beautiful locations and historic cities uh, there where we have study abroad partners. But of course, we uh, recognise that uh, sort of an area of massive growth and excitement uh, for people studying Spanish is Latin America. We have partnerships in Mexico and in Colombia. So if you're feeling really adventurous, um, there's your chance to really get stuck into these mega cities uh, and really experience uh, a completely different pace uh, of life. But obviously not everyone wants to study abroad. Uh, some of our students uh, choose to sort of study um, for one part of the year and then to do a work placement for the other. Now, students need to kind of find their own work placements or internships. So this requires students to be a little bit proactive, but we provide practical support. We help them look over contracts to make sure that everything is kind of legit and above board. We have a dedicated work placement tutor who is there to help people navigate those employment situations. So. Um, the study and work abroad options are customizable. Um, so if you're studying French and Spanish, you might decide to study in France for half the year and then study in a Spanish university for the other half, or you might decide to work in one country and study in the other. If you take the British Council option, that's a year long commitment. Um, so the year abroad is kind of the main academic year, but it's also the holidays either side. So people taking a British Council teaching assistantship who study two languages usually sort of focus on perhaps the language they feel is weakest for the most time and then sort of wrap around if they're taking this teaching assistantship option. So here you're teaching English in a primary or secondary school in your target language country for 12 hours a week. So it's a paid role. Um, and you've got uh, sort of access there to the British Council website, which has loads of information about the expectations and the kinds of destinations. And this has been running for as long as there have been modern languages students uh, in the UK. My mum studied French and she did a British Council teaching assistantship. So it's a really well established uh, programme, uh, a well oiled machine. 
Um, so we're very happy to support students in that process as well. So you've got lots of options, ways of combining to make a year abroad and tailor a year abroad to, to suit you. Now, obviously, um, since Brexit and since some changes, the way that the year abroad is financed might seem a little bit daunting to you. The first thing to say, home students pay reduced tuition fees. So you remain registered at the University of Leicester, but you're paying a nominal tuition fee. You are not paying uh, the full tuition fee that uh, you would be in the years that you're studying on campus. You remain as a home student entitled to maintenance loan support and all the usual student loans or financial support that you might access. And the University of Leicester has successfully received funding from the UK government's Turing scheme, which is the UK replacement for what used to be the Erasmus scheme funded through the EU. We and all institutions providing years abroad, we have to apply to that every year. We've been successful every time and that provides you um, again with um, with a kind of stipend for that year with that bit of extra income. Uh, and we will always support students, whatever their circumstances, to make sure that they can have uh, the best experience possible. OK, so don't let that side of things kind of worry you or concern you. The support is there, the expertise is there uh, in these matters and in bureaucratic matters to do with visas and so on. We are uh, we are up to date. We are on it uh, and you will have as much support on the year abroad as you do at home. My colleagues, um, Emma and Michelle recently had a kind of uh, Teams uh, year abroad cuppa, like a, a, a kind of coffee morning. Um, and I've had colleagues who've been on holiday in like Seville who have caught up with students there, taking them out to dinner, um, you know, uh, and, and kind of kept in touch as well. So you're never on your year abroad, you're never cut off from all of the support that you might uh, have um, on campus. Speaking of which, how do we support you? So in terms of your teaching and learning, we use a virtual learning environment called Blackboard Learn Ultra. It looks a bit like this. So this is the page for my second year post beginners French language course. And this is where we put uh, all the materials, um, everything from kind of assignments to teaching and learning materials. So you've got everything in one place uh, and easy to access. So, for example, this is where I put my slides from my classes. It's where I put extra resources or um, extra activities for students to do to support their independent learning. We also have uh, the Modern Languages Study Centre. So this is a student workspace um, just for students. Staff don't go in there. Um, you know, that's just for you. We've got a kind of little kitchen area. There's desks and computers, um, language resources, things like dictionaries or kind of books, novels. Um, and we've also got language games and kind of comfortable seating in one corner as well. Uh, and lots of our students, they'll have a class and then they'll kind of come straight up here to kind of work together. Um, and it's a really nice alternative space. Um, from the library, particularly around exam time when when some other workspaces can get busy. Uh, you've always got this space that's just for modern languages students. Um, like uh, the other uh, departments and schools within the university, we have a personal tutoring system and a personal tutoring promise. So every student is assigned a personal tutor. So it's a member of staff within their department uh, who is basically their port of call okay for any issues at all uh, we meet you in your very first week um, and we keep in touch with you um, over email and with regular meetings um, all through your career uh, at Leicester uh, so we get to know you really well we can advise uh, on all sorts of topics and signpost you to other sources of support Okay, so you can see there our personal tutoring promise. That's what we commit to. Um, we receive full training to support you. Um, and I think this lovely comment from a student who graduated last year really kind of shows what personal tutoring is and what it can do for students. My personal tutor was a real positive influence in my life during the entire four years. They always made themselves free at any moment that I needed them and even contacted me first on occasions they noticed my absence or low moods. 
they have been incredible and that's what a personal tutor is it's that person who is in your corner from day one so that you know you always have someone to turn to if you're unsure how to access support uh, if you have a question there are no silly questions no question is too big or too small for your personal tutor okay and of course to come back to that modern languages community we are a small and a friendly department i've taught at two very large well-known russell group institutions before i came to leicester i have never hands on heart been in a department where every academic member of staff has known every student's name and not just their name their course combination how they learn what their aspirations are honestly um I've never seen a place where students are so valued as individuals um, and we have an open door policy you can come and see us we have office hours we're always happy to have a chat to talk through any difficulties or questions someone has about class as I mentioned earlier um, we are very receptive to student feedback we have a student staff committee where course reps come and discuss with us what we can do differently um, what's working what's not working so well we also offer support sessions on academic skills and well-being to support your learning and we have a calendar of social events um, we're on instagram if you want to get a sense of who we are what we get up to the kinds of events we organize then that's a really kind of great place uh, to go so it's at langs lester for modern languages and you've also got um, the handle name uh, for the Leicester Centre for Translation and Interpreting Studies. So we post about the kinds of events that are going on, um, interesting stuff, academic stuff, fun stuff. Um, so please do follow us on there um, to keep in touch. And of course, you have access to uh, everything that the university provides in terms of support. Uh, so the Centre for Academic Achievement that is there to help you with essay writing skills or with note taking, all of those sort of study skills that often when you make the transition from school to university can sort of feel, um, you know, like a like a bit of a step into the unknown. Um, we cover those things in our teaching, but you've also got these other sources of support too, with the welfare and counselling teams who are there to support you uh, and your mental health. The Accessibility Centre, which is there um, to help with assessments uh, for, for example, um, SPLD, dyslexia, ADHD, and to put in place teaching plans um, with the adjustments that need to be made so that you are going to be supported in your classes uh, and lots of other um, sort of opportunities for developing uh, your skills um, as well. Now, you do a degree in modern languages. Some of you may have already encountered this, but people often ask, well, what are you going to do with that? People think, oh, well, you're going to become a teacher. Um, that's all you can do with a modern degree in modern languages. And they couldn't be more wrong. And this applies to modern languages and it applies to all degrees in the humanities. With a degree in modern languages, every door is open to you. You can still be a lawyer, you can still be an accountant, you can still be a doctor with the appropriate postgraduate training. A degree in the humanities is never going to close any doors. Okay, the world needs you. Okay, it really does, not just because you can speak a foreign language, but because you have all of these other communication skills that come along with that. You've got enhanced cognitive flexibility. You're able to problem solve, to think critically, to think laterally about a situation. Anyone who's been on a year abroad knows that you have to think fast and you learn to react and, and think analytically about a situation. Good at problem solving. You've got self-discipline to sit, to learn, to drill grammar rules and learn vocabulary. That shows any employer that you are someone who can seriously commit to work. But you're also creative, okay? Language is about expression and self-expression. And in your cultural studies modules, you're studying some of the most exciting creative production um, in the world. Okay, so you are a creative thinker as well. You've got to be empathetic when you study languages, okay? To understand others, to try to see the world through their eyes. And that's something that is increasingly valued in the modern workplace. Strong interpersonal skills, you're open minded, you have that global mindset and of course that appreciation of history, of difference, 
you really are an open-minded global citizen okay and these are not just skills that are fantastic for you and fantastic for making you feel like a really well-rounded person they're also valued by employers so you can see we have a 96 percent employability rating uh, of outcomes 15 months after graduation and as you can see from this list of sort of employers our graduates really go everywhere uh, into sort of the cultural sector into arts and media into communications and pr into business into publishing uh, into the civil service into it and technology and as you can see on here, uh, a number of them even stay at the University of Leicester. So a large number of, <laughs> of our students stay on for postgraduate study or to work in our professional services uh, or even in admissions and outreach. OK, so it really is a degree that can take you wherever you want to go and where your experiences both in the classroom and on your year abroad are going to be the perfect material for any interview question where they ask you to tell you tell us about a time when you are going to have so much to tell them and employability is also something that we embed into our courses all the way from year one so we have um, the Leicester Award and Leicester Award Gold. This is a university-wide initiative to embed employability skills into the curriculum. So in year one, we get you to reflect on skills development. And in year two, you're writing in your target language about the skills you've acquired and how they're going to help you in your future career. So we're already getting you to think about your transferable skills, about how you can frame and present those to future employers. In final year, Within the university, you've got access to the careers hub, to one to one career guidance, help with CVs and cover letters. The careers hub is there for you throughout your degree um, and after you have access for life. And in final year, it's particularly precious resource as you're starting to apply uh, for jobs. We've got obviously a global network of alumni. A range of employer partners within modern languages we have a careers tutor who liaises with alumni uh, in particular so we've recently had alumni come in and talk about how they're using their modern languages degree in a really diverse range of careers um, so we have lots of those alumni talks and networking opportunities too Within modern languages, in particular, we're very lucky to have a link with uh, RWS group, um, which uh, offers our students internships, and that's a long-standing connection. They love Leicester students, and they're really, you know, it's it's a way to get that professional experience um, in a major uh, translation firm. Okay. Just as we begin to head towards the end of me talking at you, um, how to apply. OK, uh, obviously you've got your application journey, applying through UCAS, receiving an offer. In 2024, we then have an offer holder day where you'll be able to make your decision about firm and insurance offers after you've had some taster sessions uh, and so on. And just to wrap up, uh, the final thing to say about our entry requirements, we have a standard offer that you can see there. But we're always very happy to hear from individual applicants. Do get in touch with us. We know not everyone has a kind of linear, straightforward educational journey. Uh, so please don't hesitate to get in touch with us directly during the application process with any extra information that includes on results day. OK, all right. Thank you very much. Um, there we go. I'm very happy now to hear uh, any questions that you may have. Excellent. Thank you so much for that. Um, we do have a couple of questions which we'll squeeze in before Fantastic. we um, before we wrap up at quarter to. So uh, the first question for you is, uh, what would a typical day look like for a modern languages student? Absolutely. So uh, within a typical day, you're likely to have um, a language class in at least one of your languages. Uh, so that will be two hours. Um, you'll usually have prepared um, 
either sort of submitted a piece of written work beforehand. So usually we'll go through that in class uh, and then we'll be working on new exercises. So, for example, in an oral class, uh, we'll be having discussions, uh, even debates uh, around sort of particular topics we're studying. And we're also incorporating new grammar there. So within that two hours, we'll actually be switching between lots of different activities, uh, keeping it fresh and, and covering all those bases. Uh, you're also likely to have a cultural studies uh, uh, sort of session. Again, you will have had work to prepare, some questions to think about or something to read. Uh, and within that um, that session, you'll be discussing that, um, perhaps uh, sort of again, looking at uh, different perspectives. Uh, your tutor will be likely be giving you some more information, some extra context or background, uh, or giving you an extract or a particular film clip to discuss. And around that time, you can be in the library or in the Modern Languages Study Centre, uh, preparing or doing that kind of uh, consolidation work uh, or taking advantage uh, in the evenings of all of the fantastic extracurricular opportunities that you have as well. So your time uh, is going to have those kind of contact hours, but around that it's really for you to decide what you need to do and how you want to prioritise your time. So it's that mixture of structure and routine. You will have places to be at particular times, but there's also flexibility that allows you to plan your independent study um, and to still leave time for the other things that you enjoy and that make you you. Lovely, thank you so much. Um, I think that brings us on nicely to the next question as well, which is how is studying mo modern languages at university different in comparison to studying a language at GCSE or A level? So I think the difference is that we, we move a little faster and there's a little more expectation uh, of you kind of working at things on your on your own. Um, so we won't have kind of weekly vocab tests. Um, we expect you to kind of be working on and consolidating your vocabulary and your grammar points yourself. We'll give you the exercises or the suggestions for how to do that. But we're relying on you to kind of take responsibility for your own learning. Um, so I would say that's the biggest transition in terms of the language learning part. In terms of cultural studies, again, it's that you're actually really getting to grips with literature or film. You don't need to have studied those things before in any way, shape or form. We really kind of build from the ground up how to read a text, and how to discuss it and analyse it. Um, but that's the kind of new and exciting bit, really. Um, and students often find that even if they weren't 100 percent sure about that side of the course, that actually kind of with that support and with those techniques, they come to really love that engagement with that whole new way of seeing and thinking about the world. So I would say that's the big sort of contrast. There's a big sort of step up in our expectation and your responsibility. But I think there's also a huge uh, payoff in terms of the rewards, the excitement, the enrichment, that sense of discovery. I think that's far greater than you get at school as well. Amazing. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, as we are uh, sort of approaching quarter two in the end of the session, I think we'll leave it there for now with the questions. Uh, but just wanted to thank everybody who's attended today and also yourself, Madeline, for such a fantastic talk. So thank you very much. Thank you. OK, and please don't hesitate to get in touch with us as well if you've got any further questions. Um, all right. Lovely. Thank you. Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye.